Hi, welcome back to NARC Shield. My name is Jennifer. Um, if you have not liked, shared, and subscribed, I hope that you will tonight. Thank you so much. It does help spread awareness and World Narcissistic Abuse Awareness Day is on June the 1st. I try to share um, things here to spread awareness because some people don't know what narcissistic abuse is and narcissistic abuse is emotional abuse. And it is something that isn't easy to explain. It's hard to recognize and pretty much everybody has been around narcissists even if they didn't know it um, or, and haven't experienced the really bad stuff yet where it's affected them. They may see it affecting other people around them, but it hasn't quite hit them yet. But in time, if you're around a narcissist long enough, especially if you're close enough to them, it will happen to you too, even if you don't think so. And um, so I wanted to say that when we get in relationships with narcissistic people, um, we're being groomed. We don't really see it coming. It's not like you go, oh, you know, I'm gonna go put myself out there to be abused. I want somebody to abuse me. I That's not what happens. And some people will shame people who get in relationships like that. I know that it's happened to me before because um, I've gotten in more than one relationship like that before, but it doesn't necessarily have to be a romantic relationship. I mean, this can be pretty much any relationship um, because narcissists have to have narcissistic supply. So there's different types of supply that a narcissist has, and I have described that on my channel, and it has been explained in other places. I believe that, um, in my opinion, HG Tutor explains it best on his channel, which is narcsite.com, and it is Knowing the Narcissist right here on YouTube. He explains um, the different type sources of supply. He pretty much explains everything, the different types of narcissist, why they do what they do, how they do it, why you do what you do, the different types of codependence, the different, he calls them empaths. But um, I believe that he explains it really well. Uh, Dr. Romney right here on YouTube does as well. So, but when you are in a relationship with someone like that, I don't know if this has ever happened to you, but it has definitely happened to me. And so I thought I would talk about it is, you will be with someone and in the beginning stages, of course, everything seems wonderful. But when you start going through the devaluation stage, you may hear something like this. You don't love me. You never did love me. You're such a user. Uh, it could be that they point out ways that you are a user. It could be that you just wanted me to be the father of your kids. You just You wanted me for money. Um, it could be the woman saying, um, you just wanted me uh, because you thought I was pretty and you wanted somebody pretty on your arm or you wanted me for sex or you wanted me because I had money and, and you just wanted to spend all my money and or I had um, social status and you wanted to hang on my coattails and to be, you know, bigger and, and grow within that, that uh, community. A narcissistic person they deep down don't feel as confident as what they show outwardly. And so a lot of people will, especially the, um, the more extroverted narcissist, people will think that they have tons of confidence, but the reality is that, you know, they have um, insecurities just like we all do. Or, you know, we've all been through things and we're, we're not perfect people. And there's things where we feel uncomfortable about ourselves. You'll hear different things from different people. Could be, it's like, oh, you know, I've got so much gray hair. Oh, you know, I've gained so much weight and nothing ever. Or I hate my body type. Or I, I don't live in a big house and I wish I could drive this kind of car, but so-and-so gets to drive it. I know. We all have things that we don't feel confident about. But a narcissistic person, really, they have bigger insecurities than you can even imagine. And they don't believe that anybody loves them. And the reason that they don't is because they don't love anybody. They know that everything is really superficial for them. And so they're the superior one. 
So and they're like, everybody's got to be just like me. This is what I experience. So if I experience this, everybody else experiences this too. So therefore they don't trust anybody and what they say. And um, deep down, they also, as a codependent feels this is too, this as well, but don't feel like that they deserve it or that, well, they may, that narcissistic part of them feels like they are entitled to it, but their vulnerable side um, doesn't feel like um, anybody loves them and that they don't deserve it. So um, when you're in the devaluation stage, you may get a lot of this and it's cutting you down and you may be trying to explain, yes, I do. Yes, I do. And you're trying so much harder to prove your love and prove your loyalty and that you're not lying to them and doing more and more for them, which is what they want you to do, which you will never be able to exceed their expectations because once you have gotten to a point where it's like, oh, that was great. She proved that. Now let's see what she can do or he can do. And keep, you're going to keep falling off the pedestal, you can't keep up. I mean, I know me, I have always, because people that are in pain feel like they can relate to each other or have been in pain. And so you feel like, oh, I can relate to that person. So you get in these relationships with them. Um, and so you can kind of understand a little bit. And so, and, and so you really are trying to prove to them that they deserve love, but you're, you're, you're wearing yourself out and you're getting nothing back. You're just working so hard to keep proving, proving, proving. And it, yeah, it makes them feel good in the moment, but, um, and they, they'll use it. They'll either use it, you know, they feel really good. Look how powerful and wonderful I am. This person did this for me, or they're going to use it and say, what a psycho you are that you did this stuff. You're never going to win and it shouldn't be that you're in a relationship to be winning anything. You shouldn't have to work so hard to prove your love and to get love. And when someone puts you in the devaluation stage and they may be saying, you only married me because blah, 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 blah. And oh, they're going on and on and droning on. And you're literally like, where is this coming from? Why didn't you walk in the house and start pulling this on me? You just leave. You know, you ends up in these in the fights in the end because you get so sick of it and you do start speaking up for yourself. Of course, that's when, you know, they start turning that old finger on you. But you're taking on their traits and you're actually pulling out some narcissistic traits of your own to start to defend yourself. Because you're like, I, I, there's nothing I can do to prove to you that I love you. I've done everything I can possibly do. Apparently, there's nothing I can do. And you're just going to continue to do this. And we're never going to make it this way. And they expect that from you in reality. Deep down, they always expected you to leave. And they're going to try to get in before you do. Um, because that they need to be in the more powerful powerful position. I, I remember being with someone one time and they, I might've said this on here. I know I did on my um, podcast um, channel one time. Uh, they were saying that the person that, I think it was the person that hurts the most is the one in the least powerful position. So you need to be the one that's, you know, in the more powerful position and not be the one that's hurting. So you got to get out, you know, and they were telling me this, and I remember I was, like, thinking about it. And I was like, I mean, I remembered, I was like, well, yeah, I guess that's true. Um, but now looking back on the whole conversation, I was like, oh, man, that was a big old red flag right there. A big old alarm system should have been going off for me at that point. But um, but there, there is some truth in that, right? And, but they are, they are hurting, um, and they do need you. They need your validation and they need you to constantly prove how much you love them and that you need them and want them in your life. And I get it. And I'm the type that would want to show somebody how much I love them and do as much as I can. And I, I am that type of person. However, I know that I deserve it too. And when I stop and I think about it sometimes, I'm like, yeah, I could go and I could do this. And I, you know, I love them and I care about them and I want to do this. 
and I stop and I go, but I love me too. And they don't do any, they don't care about me. They could care less if I died tomorrow. And that hurts. That hurts. But they're so into themselves and they don't have any empathy for the fact that you may need something or want something. They're, they're just so consumed with what everybody else can give them and what they can get out of life. They're not, they, they will give if they think they're going to get something back. They don't just give just to give. There's a difference. And I've talked about that before. I have a video somewhere on this, you know, um, where I kind of learned about that a little bit from a relationship that I was in. He taught me about something that he had learned in therapy and I found it so amazing. And that particular relationship, I learned so much from that person. And so um, I don't look at my life and go, I regret this and I wish I would have never been with this person and that person because I, I take every experience, even the bad ones that I've had, and I try to find the positive in it. I don't know. It's because if I stuck in the negative, I could stay in a bad place and I wouldn't move forward in life. I would stay stuck. And I don't want to stay stuck. I've been stuck. I've been there before and I've allowed myself to be stuck. And I've, I told myself I'll be stuck for this amount of time, but I'm not going to continue to stay stuck. But I'm, I'm telling you this because I know many of you have been in this position before, have talked to me about it before. I even get uh, messages now about this. And it's very frustrating, but you can't help how that person feels because nothing that you do is going to matter. It's up to them. It's up to them to look with inside themselves and do what they need to, to love themselves. And until they realize that and realize like, hey, look, you know, I can't be looking to other people to make me feel validated and loved. I need to find it within, know me and get it from within. Until they do that, um, they're always going to be um, looking for the next best thing, looking for people to love them, many different people, not just one person. Um, they're not going to be able to be in healthy relationships. They're going to push them away, that kind of thing. They need to work on themselves, and you need to work on yourself and understand that you cannot fix that and that you need to love yourself enough and that you deserve things too and somebody to want to do special things for you too and that a relationship should be more balanced. It might go like this a little bit, but you want to get it like this. It should never be like this. It should never be like that. And when it is, that's when the problems, you see all the problems. So um, I hope this helps. I hope you understand where I'm coming from. I'm just trying to give some, you know, things to think about and and so that you are aware and when you are also picking and choosing relationships to be in, if someone is always saying to you, you don't love me, you never do, you never, things like, uh, I, I've said this before, but it's like, you never dress up for me. It's like, what? I'm like, I, first of all, if we're talking about me, uh, I dress up on occasion, like I'm not, you know, I'm on here. So, you know, do my hair or my makeup or something like that. But most of the time I'm walking around with no makeup on and my hair in a bun and dressed in sweats. And that's just not because of COVID. <laughs> but, um, I was like, I can't, I used to do everything that person asked, even dressed ways I didn't even want to dress. I was like, what is this person talking about? Like, there's nothing. And then if I did dress up, you shouldn't wear, you, you wear too much makeup. You do this, you do that, you know? And I'm like, oh, the, you can't win. You cannot make anybody, or, or why did you dress up? Who are you dressing up for? <laughs> who, who are you trying to impress tonight? And you're like, oh, okay, I'm worn out. You wear me out, and the next thing you know, there's fight. This big explosion, and you're the one running off crying, and everybody's looking at you like you're the nut job, and they're standing there going, I don't know what their deal is. And you're like, and you're thinking, no, oh, he started it or she started it, whatever, whoever's in the thing. So anyway, these are just some um, 
you know, examples that I'm giving. And if you have some, I would love for you to share them in the comment section or to comment uh, or to uh, message me and let me know what you think. I hope you are doing well and COVID free and everybody's um, staying safe. Good luck with the election for whoever that it is that you are voting for because that is coming up soon. And um, I hope that you are in safe situations and not in narcissistic situations where you are feeling alone and vulnerable right now. And if you are for some reason, I hope that videos like this do help you. There are many people here on YouTube and in other ways um, other places um, that are there to support you because I know how isolating it can feel because people just don't understand if they're not in it. And I, I get that. I get that. So until next time, I hope you will like, share, and subscribe and help me share awareness about narcissistic abuse. June 1st is Narcissistic Abuse Awareness Day, and I will see you next time. Thanks. Bye.